Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. And today I'll be reading a multi-character listener by me. So let's get into it. Giyu to Miyoka. Giyu had no idea how to act to this new information. Well, he did expect it to happen. One way or another. Along the way. But he just never thought that it would be so soon. Or maybe he just never thought it would happen in this way. He didn't know what he really thought. But things were vastly different when you expected them to happen and when they became a reality. When they became a reality, they were so much scarier. So much more intimidating. It terrified him. How much of a responsibility that's been placed on him. The first time you utter the words out of your mouth, he looks at you like you were just a witch and saying a spell, and he can't quite understand what you're saying. So you say them again. Oh God, you really are pregnant. Well, that's what I was saying. I I didn't mean anything, Wyan, I'm sorry. I'm just... It's a lot to take in. You understand? He whispers, as if trying to choose his words carefully. He doesn't want to hurt your emotions or anything like that, but he's quite shocked himself and doesn't know how to process this. So, you need to be patient with him. At least you're in the start of it. But I promise you, it will all be very worthwhile in the end. Not even in the end, but in the first two weeks. Because then... You will get adjusted to the fact that there is a baby on the way, and you will do his damn best to make sure the two of you are ready for it, and to make sure he's good to you. He would read every book he could get his hands on about parenting, and he would spoil you endlessly. Why on? Please don't carry that. Let me do it for you. Oh no, why on? Sit down. I can do all of this. So on and so forth. It's like you aren't allowed to walk anymore. And although he loves you when you get his intentions, it's a little bit suffocating with him. And you would have to tell him to calm down and realize that you're probably not going to need this help, at least not until you're in the eighth month. And right now, you're only just one month in, and you can handle it. And though he feels a bit anxious, he trusts you. And he knows that when you need him, you'll be able to tell him exactly what you need. And that's why he counts on you and your intuition. Whatever you say, Wan, he'll do whatever you say. He literally does everything that you say. And as for cravings, he may ask for anything at any time. And do not doubt that Gi will find a way to get it to you, no matter how questionable his ways may be. What matters is that you got the food that you wanted, and that he had fulfilled his duty, just as he was exactly meant to. Maybe he loved you too much, to a dangerous degree, but it's nothing you can do anything about. He loves you, and he's not backing away any time soon now. So, this is one hell of a ride that he's sticking for. But, that just says how much he loves you, and how he would undoubtedly do anything for you and your future child. Rui. Rui panics. That's the easiest way to explain what he's going through right now. As much as he loves family and admires that the two of you may actually have a family of your own in the future. He never thought that the future could be so soon and that it could be coming any time now. What do you mean, Wyan? What I mean is that, well, you're gonna be a father. Do you not want that, Ray? I, I don't want to force you into anything, but I, I thought you wanted it. I thought you'd be happy. He whispered. Feeling a little bit nervous. And that's when he catches the sadness on your face. And wraps his arms totally around you. Holding you close. No, Ion. I'm not saying I don't want it. 
I'm not saying I'm not happy, but I'm scared. Of what? I'm scared of not being good enough for them. Or, or just messing up. And ruining things like I always do. When have you ever ruined anything, Ray? Well, I could list off a couple of things I've ruined. You shake your head, kissing him softly. Trust me, I know you're gonna do great. So don't panic, okay? And although he's panicking eternally, he gives you a nod and decides to believe in your words. Because surely believing in you couldn't be too bad. You love him, but most of all, you know him more than he knows himself. And that's why trusting you may be the best option here. So he listens to you and lets himself hug you, resting against you for a while until his heart calms down. And what do you know? He spells you rotten. That means he makes meals for you, ones that he actually tries to be very specific with. And once you ask him why he's being so invested in this whole thing, he tells you it's because it would be good for you and the baby to eat healthy meals. Then it melts your heart how much care he puts into every little thing that he does, even the food that he cooks you. He would braid your hair when in summer. It's actually a thing that he does whenever he's young anxious. But he would tell you that you don't need to do it because he will do it for you. And that's when you know you've reached a new record with him. He cares for you way too much. And he does way too many things. Like getting you a glass of water as if you can't walk around to just get it. And that's when you have a sit down with him. And tell him you're still capable. You're still able to function. And it takes a while for him to get it. A long, long time. And it takes a lot of breaking those habits that he formed. To be back into a sort of normal routine. One that he will allow. Without panicking. But the sweetest thing about him in all of this. Is how he hugs you at night. And rubs your belly gently. Talking to your baby as if it could hear him. And responding to it. You know that he will be a good father. Even if he doesn't see it yet. Or doesn't trust himself yet. But you already know. From the way he's behaving. He'll be the best one you've ever seen.